So what's up guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'll be showing you a deck that is very, very special to me. It is the deck I've used the most both in classic challenges and in ladder. And it's the one I've actually gotten the, the best finishes in either of those tournaments with. Um, I used it a couple seasons ago. Right now it also looks like it's good. And it's basically very fun to play with and extremely frustrating to play against since you have uh, double win condition with the goblin barrel and the skeleton barrel. Um, you also have a princess and it's just an incredible log bait to play with. It's a very aggressive deck where you have to constantly keep applying pressure to your opponents. Um, but it's a very fun deck. You have to be sure that you play defense very well because they can punish you very hard for that. But um, overall, it's a very solid deck and you will be able to find success if you end up playing it. So I'll just commentate over these matches. Um, hopefully you'll learn out of uh, these results. Um, right now we're at eight wins in a classic challenge and two losses because I was trying out other decks. Um, so let's see if we can actually win the classic tournament. So it looks like we're against um, uh, Bali, who has no clan. Uh, right now the match is starting off pretty neutral. Nobody's making mistakes, nobody's attacking extremely well. Um, he also has a princess, um, but the good thing is that we have a dark goblin to snipe her anytime that she gets played. Um, and he has the wall breakers, which is a pretty annoying card, but honestly, we have a building and we have cards that can take care of that. The best card you can level up in this deck is the Dark Goblin. I think it's one of my favorite cards. It can get so much value. It has a very long range. It shoots extremely fast and it can kill uh, any card, big tanks, small units, anything extremely fast as long as you keep it alive. So the good thing with this deck is that since it's a log bait, um, you can do one of two things. You can bait your opponents to log or arrow your princess or your... Um, your dark goblin and then go in with a full attack with a double barrel or if not uh, you can force them to log your barrels and then um, with your dark goblin uh, just melt their offense um, so right now you can see that until double elixir we're not doing much and that is a very very unfortunate ability by him because it actually hits our knight our dark goblin and then does a lot of damage to our tower here you can see our dark goblin taking care of the cannon or trying to i miss those skeletons in the end um but here just playing more aggressive letting those wall breakers connect to the tower because i prefer to use another goblin barrel on his tower to cycle and uh, start to deal a bit of damage to him just applying by split pushing uh this kind of deck you actually exert a lot more pressure on your opponent than if you were pushing normally. That is why we're sending one barrel um, to each side. Um, and then you'll see that it's just rinse and repeat. It's just uh, always doing kind of the same plays, um, putting a lot of pressure on them, constantly attacking with either barrel, uh, making sure that they don't have the log in hand. And if you can get a Dark Goblin followed by a barrel, you're gonna get a very good attack. Um, since either the Dark Goblin will tank or the Goblin Barrel will tank and the other goblins will manage to deal a lot of damage to the tower or to the defending units. You can see that this guy only has the log to take care of my um, of my units, um, so that's very good. And we're using right now, we let that um, Goblin Barrel connect to our left tower because we wanted to get a princess on his tower, but our princess decided that it was a better idea to go for his cannon cart. Regardless of that, since this guy doesn't have a building and he has to use his log to defend our our goblin barrel, um, our 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 skeleton barrel. Sorry, he's actually missing out on our on our on our goblin barrel. And you can see there that we actually logged his princess and we cycled extremely quickly back to another log for whenever he placed his um, his goblin barrel. Here he's going to protect very well his princess um, from our Dark Goblin where he puts another cannon card, um, some skeletons, and just his princess is still locked onto the tower so in the end we actually have to log her. But he ends up spending his log um, to kill our Goblin Barrel. Those abilities by the Golden Knight are killing me, they always bounce around so much. Here we decide to defend the Goblin Barrel only with a Dark Goblin and he gets it done. And it's gonna be very close, thank god that princess did not connect we're now losing but our damage from the skeleton barrel was enough and in 
double overtime, we managed to win a very, very close game to move on to our ninth win in this um, classic challenge. Remember that if we lose one game, we're out of the challenge, so we only have one chance here. Um, so now what you want to do to start off is just cycle your cards. If you don't have a, a Tesla in hand, there's no need to uh, to worry too much about it. Sadly, the hog does get two hits. It would have been lovely if it only got one. But here we are, since they spend more elixir than us and we have a counter push going on, we decide to send uh, the skeleton barrel. And since he wasted the log and the firecracker timing was not the best, look at how much damage we end up doing. We end up taking the lead for damage. And the Dark Goblin will do a pretty good uh, job at defending the, uh, the that miner if it wasn't for his ability. We have to spend a night. The Firecracker actually does not activate the King Tower, which was a bit unfortunate to be honest. But in the meantime, we actually sent another barrel to his tower. Um, he had to ignore it and we did a lot more damage to that. Now we can activate the, the King Tower with our Firecracker and defend the hog at the same time with a Tesla and some skeletons. And we're actually ahead in damage. Um, from now on, we're going to play a bit more passively. But when double elixir hits, we'll be able to push um, split push and send on just infinite amount of barrels. Um, you can see that this deck can be extremely annoying for your for your opponents, not only because you have a double barrel, but because you have a double unit that they are not going to be able to kill from afar with the princess and um, the dark goblin. They're just two very annoying cards that are very difficult to deal with. Here we log, but we cannot kill both wall breakers before they impact. Our king tower actually killed one, but the other one hit our tower. So that's when it comes in handy to have your king tower activated, um, because if not, we would have taken a lot more damage. So here his tower is almost done, his right one. Just need a couple of barrels. One thing to keep in mind with this deck is that we don't have any big spells. So in this in this case where his tower is very low, we cannot leave it to the end before we take it down because we need to make sure that we can take it down before the game finishes. We don't have a fireball or a rocket or a lightning to take down um, his tower whenever we want. So we just need to make sure to keep uh, using our goblin barrels or our skeleton barrels to get to the tower. Um, unle unless the tower is low enough that we can actually log cycle it, but right now it would take around 11-12 logs <laughs> to finish it off, so I don't think that's that's going to be um, the way to go right now. Um, his wall breakers are being annoying because I don't have a big spell that can actually kill them. The only thing I can do is put a princess that hits them and then log them, um, but oh well. You can see that we're constantly cycling princess in the back. Um, they help a lot to defend any type of pushes in any lane. Um, and here's what Wyatt has said. The princess slaps those two wall breakers and then the log is enough to finish it. But while he was attacking on the left side, our skeleton barrel actually finished the job on the right side. Um, so now this is our game for the 11th win. Um, and yeah, in these kind of decks, you want to start Goblin Barrel, but you want to place it right there where I placed it. Just in case they have... Uh, tornado because if they have tornado and they use it on your goblin barrel right there it will not activate uh, the king tower and I know that on the meta right now it's not very common to use a tornado um, however it's always a good practice to do that just in case they have and you can do either that or wait for or wait for them to reveal their cards and you to work out if they have a tornado or not so here he puts a musketeer to defend his princess, but the dark goblin actually kills the musketeer and then gets two hits on the tower. And he did all that just costing three elixirs, so he is a pretty good unit um, since he's so quick and has such long range. Um, but right now we're in a good spot. Now that we know that his deck very likely does not have tornado, we can throw goblin barrels in the middle. And he actually reveals his mega knight, which can be a pretty scary card. We have to use our Tesla, even though he has um, a Hog Rider, we have to use it and then hope that will cycle back. The Princess here is going to be very good to kill all the bats from the Night Witch. Um, and the Knight is just going to be amazing to tank and keep our Tesla alive in, in case that he wants to use his, um, his Hog Rider again. He reveals that he has a Lightning, so we go with a Skeleton Barrel. Uh, just think that we, he won't have enough Elixir to defend our push. And we're kind of right, because he uses some bats. Um, and then a Bandit. We put some skeletons under Dark Goblin. That 
that position of the Dark Goblin is not the best because now the Bandit is gonna actually kill it and then still get one hit on our tower. But regardless, we end up taking the tower with our Goblin Barrel and now we just have to defend, which one way you can defend since this deck has a very quick cycle um, is just putting Teslas in the middle. You can get so many Teslas down. If you put Tesla and then use your fast cycle with a Princess Log, um, Goblin Barrel, whatever. Um, but no, a Tesla in the middle usually defends um, pushes coming from both lanes, so that should be fine. And then look at this tactic, we use the Skeleton Barrel to drag to stop the Musketeer. Um, she kills the Skeleton Barrel, all the Skeletons actually kill her. And that's now far away from the, from the Mega Knight, and we can use another cycle Tesla to take care of the Hog and the Bats. So there you can see the power of this deck, how fast it can cycle. And yeah, um, now on the left, I think we're gonna do a double barrel attack. You can see that this is very good in case that they have used their log because the skeleton barrel tanks for the goblin barrel goblins and they can deal so much damage. Look, just that attack, six elixir left this tower at 1,200. Um, so yeah, that's very nice. Um, we'll take this other W. You can see here is skeleton barrel again. They're gonna kill it and it's gonna pop the majority of the bats. Yeah, so now we're going, we're 12, we're 11 wins in and two losses out. So now we have the last game to try and win this classic challenge starting from eight and two. Um, so here what we're gonna do is actually start in the back with a princess and just wait to see what he does. Oh yeah, never mind. This was a Royal Giant game. I don't think we're winning this. Yeah, never mind then. So thank you very much. I'll leave you with the chest opening. If you like the video, please like, comment, any other videos that you will want to see in the future, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.